Have you ever heard that your logo is the face of your brand? Well, there's a lot more to branding than just creating a logo. And keeping your visual branding consistent across your business is an important way for you to connect with and build your audience. Hi, I'm Liz Stapleton, founder of the Blogger Breakthrough Summit, and welcome to the Blogger Breakthrough Podcast. In today's episode, you're going to learn how to improve your visual brand consistency from graphic design superstar Madison Weatherhill. Madison shared these branding tips during the 2021 Blogger Breakthrough Summit, and I can't wait for you to learn them too. Let's jump right in. Upon, and so now we can start thinking about the visual side of your branding. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is brand consistency. So it, I gave a couple of examples of when things start to get a little bit off track with your branding. So typically this is something doesn't fit or doesn't feel right about your branding. And so you go off course and try to create something new. So the very first thing you need to do in order to check to see if your brand is consistent across all platforms is that you first have to review what you have. So this can be as simple as taking some screenshots and putting them in a folder on your computer. If you are more uh, tangible and you want to print these out and sort of make a board, that is a great way to do this too. You could also just open all of these things up on your computer and look at them. But you want to look at things like your logo, your website design, any Pinterest graphics that you have, your photography style, and really any other graphics that you're creating. Maybe just open up your Canva account and look through things. Your freebies might be a good one, or even your email marketing campaign template. So you want to kind of look at what all of these pieces look like together. Then you're going to start to evaluate. So you want to first think about everything we've laid as the foundation, as the strategy for your brand. And you want to start to think about does your current branding work for your audience, your niche, and your messaging? Does it feel in line? And this is really when you have to, even if you are not a designer, you can still look at something and know whether it feels off. Maybe you can't explain what feels off about it yet, but you can look at a couple of pieces of your branding and then think about your audience member and think about, would this resonate with my audience? Would this person be attracted to this Pinterest design? And you can start to just figure out whether these things are starting to build a great puzzle that works, or if you're starting to see that there's some fragments in place. Then you can look at the branding and see if it's visually consistent. So are you using the same colors, the same fonts? Are you using the same overall style, like a minimalist style, or maybe it's bright and bold? And you want to just think about, are these things lining up? Next, you're going to document. So I'm going to talk about this a little bit on the next slide, but this is when you really start to create a, a visual representation of what your branding is. Maybe when you look at everything that you have so far, you realize that your Pinterest graphics are a little bit off. So you're going to rework those once you have this branding document in place. And then last, once you have evaluated everything, you've maybe redone a couple of things about your branding and you've documented into documented it into a brand board, which again, we'll talk about in a second, then you can start to create templates for consistency. So I love using Canva for this. I create all of my client graphics for them in Canva so that they can reuse them in the future. And this is a great way to have consistency within your templates because it's right there and built in for you. So again, when you're talking about DIYing your branding, whether that's because you're not ready to work with a brand designer or you don't want to for whatever reason, my best tips for DIYing your branding is again to keep it simple. So this means you want to use one or two fonts and I typically recommend if you're doing a logo and you're DIYing it, just do one font. It's, it's often hard for people who are not designers to be able to pair up fonts together unless that's something that is a natural strength of yours, generally I would say keeping it to one font is going to help with consistency. Um, if you're thinking about your website design, you can pick one font for your body font and one font for your headings. And then maybe try to incorporate those fonts into your logo design. Um, when it comes to colors, you want to choose two to three colors at most. I typically recommend to do one primary color and one secondary color. And those are going to be the two colors that you're going to use the most in your graphics and your branding. It's also usually helpful to have some sort of gray color to be an accent color without really having something that is competing against your other colors. 
So then again, you're going to create a brand board once you have all of these things decided, and that is going to help you be consistent across your platforms. And whenever you want to create something new, you'll be able to refer back to that brand board. All right, hopefully this episode has helped you to better understand the basics of visual brand consistency and gave you some ideas on how to evaluate and improve your own. If you want to learn more about building your brand from Madison or want to hear more blogging tips and tricks, be sure to jump over to bloggerbreakthrough.com forward slash podcast deal to find out how you can access all the 2021 Blogger Breakthrough Summit sessions. Be sure to join me next time when we dive into creating freebies that your audience will love. Catch you then. Thank you.